uh, but we'll get everything called up and stuff uh, a, little, a little later on and in the third quarter, I guess, there probably will just get it all wrapped up. I don't, you know, if there's anything of concern or issues, I mean, I, you know, definitely bring it up and, and talk about it. I, I feel that we're pretty open and can do that. And I want you to do that. I want you to be open and honest and things like that. And uh, don't let things, you know, fester. Don't let things hide. If you've got a concern or an issue, just, uh, you know, talk about it. And uh, or, or something needs to be done around the church, we'll get it taken care of. So. I appreciate all the ones that do things and and help out in multiple capacities, and, and I appreciate that. It uh, it takes everybody working together to make this thing work, and, and I appreciate that. But if you would open your Bibles up this evening to the Book of Revelation, uh, we'll continue in our prophecy study. The Book of Revelation will be in Chapter Nine uh, tonight. Last week, or actually, excuse me, two weeks ago. Uh, last week was Father's Day, so we didn't have service on Sunday night, so. Uh, two weeks ago, we got through chapter 8 of Revelation and actually ended up reading, um, I think, the first two verses of chapter 9, if I remember correctly. Well, we're going to go back to those and reread them tonight just to catch you up on speed and get you back up to speed here a little bit and, and catch you up. Uh, and honestly, there's a lot of information in chapter 9, a lot of information, a lot of things to unpack, a lot of things to digest, a lot of things to really... Uh, honestly, it's hard to comprehend a lot of what happens in this chapter uh, and everything. And um, We're going to look through it here and probably maybe make it halfway through tonight. I'll just be honest with you. I don't see us making it through this entire chapter tonight, and I'm not going to rush anything. I, I want us to go verse by verse, line by line, and learn together as a church family. And, and uh, we're just going to do that. And we'll see how far we can get. Whenever how far we get, that's where we get to, and we'll pick it up again next week. Uh, and stuff, but Revelation chapter number nine. If you remember, in chapter number eight, it started out with uh, silence in heaven. Uh, it said that there was a, a silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. Now, remember, that's unusual because heaven is a loud place. It's a place of worship. It's a place of praise. It's people, uh, you know, praising God continually. It is loud, so all of, the, all of a sudden you have silence. And I, and I said, I, if, I, if I remember correctly, I don't have my notes with me tonight. I'm just strictly going with what I have written in my Bible here. But if I remember correctly, I, I think I referred to that as kind of a shock and awe moment. Uh, because the folks in heaven are just in shock and awe of what is to come, what is to happen. You, you go through uh, the, uh, the, uh, the seals and everything, and then you get to the... Uh, the seventh and, and uh, the seventh seal there, and when you get to that, that opens up a whole new uh, can of worms, if I could uh, if I could say it that way. You lead into the seven trumpets, and we saw uh, the seven angels and the seven trumpets, and we saw the the first angel and the second angel, third angel, and fourth angel all blow their trumpets mm -hmm. in chapter number eight. Okay, so we saw one through four as far as the trumpets go be revealed in chapter number eight. And if you remember, verse number 13 in chapter number 8 says, An angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So you have seven trumpets. We've, we've seen four of them all sound in, in chapter number 8, and they build upon one another. They get progressively worse and worse and worse with each one. And this angel saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. We have three woes there. And it's saying, listen, only four have happened. we still got three to go. So that's where we pick up tonight. And like I said, we read just the first two verses of chapter 9 last time we were together. But I do want to uh, reread those tonight, if I may, just to catch you up and make sure everybody's on the same page. And, and remember... Uh, verse number 10, I want you to look at verse number 10 of chapter 8. It said, When the third angel sounded, there fell, uh, there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the water. Now that's important because that word star there in the Greek is aster, which is where we get in our English vernacular, our English vocabulary, the word astral. Okay? Why is that important? Well, when we get to chapter number 9, look what it says in verse 1. It says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now notice it used the word star again. 
Um, but you know our English language is a lot different from Hebrew and Greek. So when you look at that word star, it's a stare, and it means an angelic being or a messenger. Okay, so we see something different happening here because think about it. The asteroid that happened in verse number 10, it just said that it fell. It was burning like a lamp. It fell on the third part of the rivers. But here in chapter number 9, verse 1, it says, saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, right here where we're at today on planet earth. But it says, and to him was given the key. Notice that to him, it actually called this quote unquote star a him. Okay, that's not a thing like an asteroid. That is an actual being, if you will. So it says that uh, it fell uh, from the earth, uh, from uh, from heaven upon the earth, and him was given the key of the bottomless pit. That is a horrible, horrible place. And that is a place that I don't even want to look into. I don't want to see. I don't want to be around. It's the bottomless pit. It's known as the abyss. Uh, if you look at it from the from the Greek, uh, but notice what it says. It says, "And he opened the bottomless pit. Who opened it? That star that fell from heaven. That angelic being. That messenger. Uh, some people in some commentaries uh, believe this to be Satan himself." Uh, doing this action and we really don't know who it is for sure but there's a lot of commentary on that but it says that this person was given the key of the bottomless pit uh, you know and and who's who's given that key who the lamb remember all the stuff that's happening all these judgments that's happening it's who doing it god Okay, yeah, it is, it is pure chaos. It is, it is just a, a slaughter bath, if you would, here, here on planet Earth and just horrible things happening. But who's in, who's in charge of it? God is. It says the Lamb, he's the only one that's holy enough to, to, to look upon the seals, to touch them, to do this. It's, it's not Satan, if you will, doing this evil stuff on Earth. It's actually God allowing this to happen. It's God's judgment, God's wrath coming down on mankind for us rejecting him and basically uh, basically spitting in his face for all these years and mocking him. And and it was even talked about this that this morning about how God is a loving God. Yes, that is true, but he's also a God of wrath. He's a God of judgment. And it's only because of his grace and his mercy that any of us are still here today. Uh, you know, because you, th you think about it and stuff, he holds our holds our life in his hand and he could just end it if he wanted if he wanted to but it's by his grace and his mercy we are who we are we're we're here tonight and we're able to be saved and saved by his grace and and i'm, I'm thankful for that tonight but it's it's all because of him that all this stuff's happening there's going to be a day when god's going to say okay that's enough they told me no for the last time because we have people every day telling God, no, no, no. They don't want him. They don't want no part of him. They tell him no. They're rejecting him. They're throwing him out of the school system or throwing him out of the country. or throwing him out of everywhere. And eventually there's going to come a day where he's just fed up and done. And he's going to say, you've told me no for the last time. Yeah, you've told me no for the last time. And like I said, I believe we're very, very close to the coming of the Lord. But he says that he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. Now, one thing you're going to notice about chapter number nine as we go through here, and I did this with my study going through kind of underlining, you're going to see John. Remember, John is seeing all this happen. He's seeing this vision, and he's trying to describe all this stuff by visionary, by what he knows, what he sees. So, like, he wouldn't know what an iPhone is. He wouldn't know what a computer looks like. He wouldn't know what a, an army tank looks like. He wouldn't know those things. So he says through this chapter many times, he'll say, uh, was as or like as. What that means is he's using something to, to describe it the best way he knows how. He's like, listen, it looks like this. It's not this, but it looks like it or it acts like it. John, when something is what it is, he'll tell us. He'll say it is this. He's visually seeing this. But when he has a hard time describing it, uh, basically from things that we know, he uses the, the terminology of as 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 it or or as the smoke of or or it's, he says was as or were as. And you're going to see that a lot in this chapter because a lot of things are being revealed to John that no doubt he never saw before. He, he never knew what a lot of this stuff was. So 
he is strictly trying to describe it the best way he can. He's like, listen, it looks like this. You know, it's as this, but it's not that. But that's the best way I can tell you. So, so it's kind of hard to to grasp that that's sometime in the sometimes in the book of Revelation. But John did the best that he could with what he what he knew. But it said that when he opened this bottomless pit, a rose smoke out of it. Smoke. It says as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, hadn't already we read where? The, the days and stuff had been cut shorter. The sun had already been darkened. The sun, the stars in heaven had been darkened. The moon had been dark. Listen, we talked about the effects of that. I mean, your, your days are going to be shorter. The nights are going to be longer. There's going to be less light. There's going to be uh, less sunlight. There, therefore, there's going to be less heat. Uh, the, the temperatures are going to change a lot. It's probably going to be cold and dark and, uh, and just... It was things we really can't describe or, or imagine, honestly. But notice what it says. It says, uh, uh, the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason. They were darkened because why? Because of the smoke of the pit. All that smoke, it came up out of that pit. Now, anybody notice this weekend how dusty it was? Yeah. Did you notice that? First time? I said, good Lord, just add that to the list of 2020. That, yeah. That's Sahara Desert yeah. dust storm, whatever it is, blowing up into the, under this area. I mean, because Dora, I told her many times yesterday, because I thought my eyes were messing up on me. I was looking out there, I was like, golly, it is just like smoky looking out through here. It's dusty. It looks dirty. I mean, your windshields on your car had this stuff laying on it, kind of caked on it. Nothing had happened. And uh, Lord knows what we were breathing. Uh, but I mean, you yeah, think of that for a minute. You think of how, how smoky it looked, how how, how dusty, dirty it looked, I guess you could say. That's kind of a, 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 an analogy there, if you will, of how this is going to be. When that pit's opened up, all that smoke's going to come out and just, just cover us. And, if, and even the meteorologists and stuff, you can look at the weather maps and it shows all this smoke, how it's just how it came up out of the Gulf and now it went up into well, Tennessee, Virginia and all over the place and I don't know how long it's going to stick around 2020, who knows. But, uh, but anyway, you, you see that. So it made me really think of this verse. I thought, well, that, that, that's kind of a precursor of what we're going to see. And, and I've said it many times, 2020, with all the things that we're seeing happening, the coronavirus, the pandemics, the shortages of stuff and people going crazy over the stores and the loot, looting and rioting and and just cursing God and, and murder hornets and sickness and, and now dust. All that stuff is nothing more than a precursor of what's to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to see a quick 20-second preview of the book of Revelation, look at 2020. Yeah. And, that, I mean, that's not going to touch the iceberg of what's really going to happen. But you look at this year, mm -hmm. you see all the similarities between it and what's to come. I believe, like I said... God's given us a very long altar call right now as not just our nation, but as a world to make things right with him. But he's also foreshadowing. He's showing us just a little glimpse of what things could be like later on. you got people out in the world today running crazy, has no clue what's going on. We read our Bible, we're like, well, I can see how that happens. I can see how that's going to come about now. 20 years ago, you couldn't see that. You know, preachers back... And I'll give you just a quick example on this. Preachers back 50 years ago, and, and we're getting there. It's going to take a few weeks, but talking about the two witnesses dead in the street. Yes. 50 years ago, preachers preached that. They believed it, but they never knew how that was going to happen. Yes. Well, we all have cell phones now. You can see what's going on in any part of the world at any time. Facebook Live, Instagram Live, Twitter, I mean, you know, Snapchat, whatever the case may be. All that stuff, you can see literally anything going on in the world at any time of day. So I can easily see now in my lifetime, in my generation, yeah. of how those witnesses are going to be seen by the entire world. Yeah. And we're going to get there eventually. That's that's going to be a very interesting study. We'll get there. Um, but like I said, preachers 50 years ago had no clue about that. They, they like, wonder how that's ever going to happen. You know, and here we are in the iPhone world today and, and Androids and all that stuff, and we can easily see how that's going to happen. So just something to think about of how all this is going to come into play. We can see that all this stuff that Revelation talks about is not far-fetched, okay? It's, it's not far-fetched at all. It is, it is here. We're living here. But notice what happens. It says, And there came out of the smoke, out of the smoke where? Out of the smoke, out of the bottomless pit, and came smoke. 
and it says locusts upon the earth. Locusts upon the earth. Remember, we've talked about locusts a lot in here previously. They're having problems with locusts already in Africa, up into the Middle East. It is taking over and killing their crops. I mean, you, you think of the things that, that they do, the destruction that they bring. Yeah. I mean, that's nothing compared to what's going to happen. But there again, we're seeing a foreshadowing mm -hmm. of what's to come. And many times when you study the Word of God, many times, especially Old Testament, God would use use locusts mm -hmm. to bring judgment. Yeah. He would use that that crazy looking little insect thing, and he would he would he would drive people crazy with it. I mean, dozens of times in the Bible you see locusts being used for judgment and things like that. Notice what it says. It says, out of that bottomless pit, out of that smoke came locusts upon the earth. That's here, right here where we're at today, breathing and living, planet earth. And it says, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Notice what it says. It says that the locusts that they were given power. Mm -hmm. They had power to do things. It says that they were given power as, now we see that word as, he's describing as the scorpions of the earth have power. I don't know if you've ever I, uh, noticed much about scorpions or real, I mean, they're a crazy looking little animal and stuff, but they can inflict great pain to people. I mean, they have that tail with a stinger, they can sting you, they uh, they can bring great pain. They can, they can kill you. They can cause a lot of trauma for a person. So the, they, these locusts are going to have power to do things. Okay, that, that's basically what that verse is saying, what it's telling us there. Notice what it says. And it was commanded them. It was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, there's a lot right here in this verse, and this is why we're just taking it slow. I want to go slow through this to make sure we grasp it and catch it, um, because there's a lot here. Notice the first thing about, about verse number four. The locusts came out of the bottomless pit, out of that smoke. They were given power. What's the next thing it says about it? It says, and it was commanded them. They were taking orders from someone or something. You're talking about demonic forces here, is what you're talking about. These locusts were being commanded by someone, by something. It says, it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Okay, what little bit's left? Remember what happened to the grass, all the green stuff of the earth and stuff, how it burn up and fried and... And, and all that and all that mess that happened in the previous chapter. So it says they're, they're, they're not allowed to hurt the grass. They can't hurt any green thing. There's not much of it left, if you remember. Can't hurt any green thing, neither any tree. Not many trees left either, but they can't hurt the ones that are left. It says, but only, this is the power that they have, only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, well, who's it talking about when it says the seal of God in their foreheads? We talked about this in chapter number 7 of Revelation. This is talking about the 144,000 and their converts. Okay, That is talking about the 144,000 uh, evangelist preachers, missionaries that are around the world uh, that, that God has, has called them to, to preach, the redeemed Jews, if you will, to preach to a, a dying world, a, a sin-filled world. And no doubt, we talked about it in chapter number 7, there are, there are going to be people that believe that are going to be saved. There's going to be people that are going to be martyred. So the ones that it's talking about that, that, that they can't hurt are the ones uh, that, uh, that are sealed, sealed by God here, which is 144,000 plus their converts. If it's not them, if it's not those that, that have that seal of God in their forehead, foreheads, as it says here, it says they can hurt them. It's, notice, it says, only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given, there we see that word again, given, that they should not kill them, but that they should be what? Tormented. How long? Five months. You know what? I found that interesting. I thought, what's the deal about five months? And we're going to see that pop up again in a few minutes, the word five months. 
You know what the average lifespan of a locust is? Five months. I thought, wow, well that makes sense now. I never knew that. I didn't. I thought they lived a little longer than that and stuff and I guess thank goodness they don't you know but but I got to looking at that the average lifespan of the locust is five months what does it say that they're going to do it says that they were given that they should not kill them not kill these people but that they should be tormented five months they were tormented there remember the the man and the rich man that died and went to hell he said I'm tormented in this flame Remember that word torment? Listen, it is a it is a horrible thing. I mean, there's nothing worse than you can think about being tormented. I mean, and we want to see here in just a few minutes how bad it gets, okay? But just hang with me. But it says that they were tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. So what happens when a scorpion strikes you? You're going to swell up. You're going to hurt. You're going to go in pain. Some people will, will actually uh, start having seizures and things like that with their body. They will start uh, sweating profusely. They, they may pass out. Uh, and, and all this is going to happen. It says, and remember what I said, he, he's using uh, visionary terminology here. He's trying to tell us what it's like. He says, you're not going to kill them, but you're going to torment them five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. So when a person is stung by a scorpion, those effects that happens to the body, and it can be different for every person because of our makeup and allergies and different things like that in our body. But when that sting happens, all that pain and suffering and agony that you go through, that's what's going to be happening here on planet Earth for five months. I mean, think of that for now. Yeah, that's going to be some horrible stuff. I mean, honestly, it's things that we really can't even vision or think about. I mean, we can't wrap our mind around that. And just when you think that that's something you can't wrap your mind around, read verse number six. It says, and in those days, what days? Days of major judgment. That's what this is talking about. We got the, the, the seven trumpets going here. So major judgment. And remember, they're building upon one another and they, they intensify with each one. And in those days, days of major judgment, shall men seek death and shall not find it. It says, and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. That, I don't know about you, but that's something I can't wrap my mind around. Yeah. But one thing that does tell me, that shows me how God has our life in his hand. And when it's your time to go, guess what? You're going to go. When God says, no, I'm not through with them yet. I'm not finished with them yet. It's not their time to go yet. Guess what? They're not going. But some way, somehow, during this time, God is not going to allow man to die. I mean, I, I just can't fathom that thought. I mean, if, if we were driving down the highway, heaven forbid, if we were driving down the highway and it was in a head-on collision, there's a good chance of death. If you go home and, 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 and take a gun and shoot somebody, there's going to be death. If you go uh, downtown Bristol and jump off the top of a building, you're going to slide it on State Street and you're going to be dead. But during these days, during this time, that death is being removed. I mean, think about that for a minute. People are going to want to die they're going to, because they're being tormented constantly for five months. They're being tormented. People are going to want to die. No doubt people are going to try to die, to try to commit suicide, to, to a limit. Because what, what's uh, people that, that talk about suicide and different things like that, what do they want to do? They're, be, they're, they're possibly down or in a bad situation, depressed, whatever, and they just want the pain to go away. They want the torment to go away, so they just want to end their life. People are going to want to end their life, and guess what? God's going to be like, no, can't do it. I mean, I just can't fathom. the. Th I mean, that's something Hollywood can't work up. I mean, to see somebody, and, and I'm sure with the way the news media and stuff like that is, we're going to be, uh, well, we're not, but people are going to be seeing this stuff on the news. Yeah. You're going to see somebody literally jump off of a building and live. Yeah. I mean, I, I just can't fathom the thought of that, but it says in those days, shall men seek death and shall not find it. God, God's going to pull that away, and listen, that shows us how God is in control of life and death. Listen, he owns that. 
listen, the, the devil will not kill you. God is in control of our life. He's the giver and taker of life. And it's appointed man once to die. And the Bible tells us that. But it says that men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die. They have a desire to die. That means that they want to die. They want to end the torment. And they want to commit suicide. Or, and, even, and even attempt it. They do it. And it says, and death shall flee from them. I mean, that's just unbelievable to me. I mean, if you want to notate something outside that verse in your Bible, put wow. <laughs> I mean, I mean, because I just can't fathom that. And like I said, there's a lot of information in chapter number nine that is hard to kind of grasp and get a hold of and figure out. And, and, and But we just have to accept the fact, hey, God's God and he's going to bring judgment. And if the Bible says it, I believe it. But in, in our lifetime right now, which we're living in this reality, if you will, and stuff, we see death happen every day. You turn the news on, death happens every day. But there's going to be a day when this world turns the news on and there's going to be no death found. And you're just going to have torment after torment after torment. And you've got five months of that. And, and people are not going to die. No matter what they do, it says that death shall flee from them. I mean, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. And, and listen, that's, that's a reality, folks. That's going to happen one day on this earth, which we call home. Planet Earth. I mean, it's going to happen one day. Yeah. And, and now in verse number 7, notice what it says. It says, in the shapes of the locusts. Now he's going to start describing these animals, this, these locusts. Here. He said, the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. And, their ha and, and they had hair as the hair of women. Well, that's something, ain't it? It says they had, had faces of men, they had hair as a woman. And it says, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. I mean, these are a scary-looking beast. This ain't your everyday normal locust in Africa right now. This is something that God has prepared for a special time and a special place during this judgment to happen. And guess what? The bottomless pit is here on earth. Yeah. Chapter 9 told us the bottomless pit is here. It's somewhere on earth. I don't want to stumble across it, but it's here on earth. But there are things in the Bible, secrets in the Bible, Deuteronomy, I don't remember if you remember that or not, but early on in our study when we talked about numbers and things like that, we talked about how there are secret things to God. And listen, there's some things that God has appointed a time and a place for to happen and be revealed. And, and, and it's not going to happen until then. Well, that's what we see here. Listen, the bottomless pit is here on earth. That angelic being, if you will, is going to have the key to um, open that and unlock that. And when it happens, that smoke pours out, the locusts come out. And when you read that, basically these locusts are like some sort of a soldier ready for battle. Or they're a soldier that is ready uh, for battle, and it's and it says, and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. See how many times John is using the things whereas, as it were like. He, he's trying to describe it the best way that he can with what he knows. And remember, he's not going to know what we know today as far as the things we have and the things we see, the technology, the military. All that stuff's going to be big players in this stuff, okay? So, you know, who knows what it's all going to be, but we, we try to take it the best we can. It says their breastplates were of iron, and, and notice this, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. They're going to be loud. It's going to be loud. You know, you can tell the difference between... Uh, a normal commercial airliner versus a military jet. Oh, yeah. You can tell the difference between a normal helicopter from uh, the uh, hospital versus a military helicopter. Mm -hmm. Notice what he said. It, he said that it, the, the wings were the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. It was loud. It was deafening. It was, uh, they, uh, they were prepared for battle. They were prepared for war. And it says, and they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stingers in their tails. And their power was to hurt men, what? Five months. There we see that again, five months. Remember, it, it, uh, John pinned down here as a reminder to us, their power was to hurt men. It wasn't to kill them. It was to hurt them. It says, 
uh, and for five months. And it says, and they had a king over them. Think about that for a minute. Remember what we said in verse number four, it was commanded them. Mm -hmm. They were taking commands from somebody. Notice this, that they had a king over them. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue have his name Apollyon. If you look up that word Apollyon in the Greek, it actually means destroyer. That's what that word means is destroyer. They were out to seek and destroy. What's the devil out to do? To seek and destroy. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion. He's out to seek. And what did he say? Uh, and, he, and if you notice, uh, John talks a lot about lions here mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's definitely definitely demonic type forces that is happening here. And we're about done for tonight. Um, but notice what he says. It says they had a king over them, gave us their names, and the name means destroyer. Mm -hmm. And it says in verse number 12, we want to end here. It says, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. John's letting us know, hey, you just read all these verses and that was just one of the woes. Yeah. That was just one of the woes. That the, yeah, that, that the bottomless pit has been opened up. The locusts have came out. Here's what and I tried to describe them to you the best way what they're going to look like. Basically, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a war. And their main purpose to be here is to hurt man and for five months. And during that time period, man's not going to be able to die. They're going to be tormented. Yeah. They're going to be left here to be put through that torment. Yeah. And people think, my goodness, five months is a long time to be tormented. Well, what about the people that are in hell right now? Yeah. It's forever. Yeah. That's a lot longer than five months. Yeah. People that, I mean, think about that for a minute. That should really get us thinking. People that, that are on their way to hell. People that reject Christ. People that aren't saved. You, the, he, just like the rich man in, in, in the Gospel of Luke, he, he said, I'm tormented in this flame. Day and night. And the way that was written, he's still there today, folks. Once you're there, you're there. Yeah. And it's for all eternity. It's forever and ever and ever and ever. And then, like I said, in verse number 12, it says, One woe is past. Remember, verse number 13 of chapter 8 says, Woe, woe, woe. It says that only four has happened, three more to go. He said these are yet to sound. So here in verse number 12, we're reminded one woe is past. John wants us to realize, hey, all this stuff I just told you about, that's only one. It wasn't all three. It wasn't more than that. It was just one woe. He says there are two woes more hereafter. And listen, it's going to get more crazy. It's going to get more violent. I mean, people are going to be like, why in the world? Listen, the question is, why in the world don't we treat God like we should treat him. Mm -hmm. Honor him for who he really is. Listen, mm -hmm. he is merciful and gracious toward us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you turn the news on and hear the, hear the things that people are saying and doing. It's like, Lord have mercy. It's like, how much longer can you put up with this mess? Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. I, I don't understand his grace and his mercy, the patience that he has. I, listen, I believe the only reason he's not came is he's waiting on those last few to be saved. I believe that with all my heart. I think once that last one does, boom, we're out of here and gone. Yes. I don't know if that'll happen in this church or the church down the street or in another state or in another part of the world. I don't know. But it could, ha it could happen just like that. It's going it could. It's going to happen that way. But we see one woe is past. And we're going to pick up in verse number 13 starting next week, if that's okay with everyone. We'll pick, we're taking it slow through this because there's a lot to digest. And I encourage you, if you would, Read the rest of this chapter sometime this week. There's a lot to happen here. And, and we're going to see more demonic forces at work. Okay? We're going to see how it talks about uh, angels being loosed, uh, which means they were in prison. God had them bound down. And, and it's going to even talk about in verse number 16, a number of the ar uh, army of the horsemen were 200,000. And, and, and John says, I heard the number of them. He said, I heard them. It's talking about a 200 million man army here at one point. I mean, there's a lot to take in, a lot to happen. And I will go ahead and tell you this. There's only one nation in the world today that can produce that kind of army. It's China. It's things to think about. I mean, they're not a good friend of the United States. 
there's a there's a lot to take in there, but there's only one nation in the world that can fit that description of 200 million in the army, in the military. And what we want to see is basically a demonic force here uh, being controlled by a demonic force. We're going to go uh, through all that and get through all that, but uh, we're probably going to see things like chemical warfare come into play here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just unbelievable all the things that happen in this one chapter. So we're going to end there tonight after one woe. I mean, because that's a lot to take in, a lot to digest. And we'll pick back up next week with verse number 13 and get through the remainder of chapter number nine. But I appreciate you being here tonight. And uh, uh, so uh, I appreciate